I'm back, I'm back. My last video, wow, so many great comments. If you haven't seen that video, or even if you have, go back and read through all of the comments because you guys had some great ideas about things that you do in your homeschool for, um, you know, those extra type subjects. So I was really blessed by that. If you are just stopping in here for the first time, my name is Julie and I'm so glad that you're here. We have been going through just a few days, I called it a week, but I started in the middle of the week, so I'm going to end in the middle of the week, of just some homeschooling topics because over here at our house, we're getting ready to get back to homeschooling the beginning of August. We took the month of July off. We consider ourselves year-round homeschoolers because I believe even during our month off, of course, we learned so much. We just mostly took a month off from those few subjects where we sit down at the table, do it as a family, our math, you know, those kind of more structured things. But of course, you can never take time off from learning. You're always learning something good or bad. I am so excited. If you haven't heard the news, my mom's group, the Delightful Homeschool Moms Group, is open. I told everybody about it on Saturday. It's the thing that I've been working on. The DelightfulHomeschool.com website and then the Moms Group, which is a private membership group. And I have ladies joining me and I am so excited to see what this year will hold for us as we just get to share life together in a more intimate way because I'm keeping this group small. I'm actually only going to keep membership open through the end of the month and then I'm going to close membership for now so that we have a chance to just kind of form a community within this group and it's not, you know, continual new people popping in. So that is my plan. If you have not checked it out yet, go to the delightfulhomeschool.com or you can ask me any questions that you have about it. Um, I will link below the video that I put out on Saturday that told all the details. I'm just really excited about it. Um, okay, so I had a lot of questions on my last video, two videos, about two different things. So I'm going to cover these two things today. One is how we log hours here in Missouri, how we keep track of what we've done, especially since we follow a more delight-directed approach. And the second was about our um, rotating subjects that I touched on last week in, um, in my last video. I talked about that there are some things that I keep a list of that we just do once in a while together as a family. And so you all wanted to know more about how does that happen? So I have a couple resources here. Liddy, are you going to be good back there? She said yes. She's playing on the floor. Woo! I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so first of all, let me talk about um, what our day looks like. Because I think maybe in the um, amount of information that I gave to you in the last video, it may have gotten lost in all of that. So I just want to just quickly go through this. So I write out a, a general, I call it a block schedule for our day. I used to follow a very um, pretty rigid schedule. Several years ago I used managers of their homes and I actually have videos on that in one of my playlists. I think it's my large family logistics playlist that you can go back. If that's the season of your of life that you're in and you need that, go back and watch those videos and see how I did it. But right now in our life we just need more flexibility. We have a lot of things going on, a lot of projects, and we've grown in different ways. And so I use a more of a block schedule. So what I mean by that is that I block out, you know, first we're going to do this, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do this. And it is, it's during those general times, but it's not a rigid like, you know, every day at 9 a.m. we're sitting at the table. So this is what I have hanging on the wall. This is my school day block schedule. So we typically would do this Monday through Thursday, and then we take Friday, Saturday, Sunday for other things as a family. So what this is... Um, it shows the approximately the order that I like to do things in. So we have morning checklists. I have lists for my kids and breakfast. Family learning time. That's the rotating subjects that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Free time, lunch. And then we get back to it. Unless kids did this in the morning, of course, they're welcome to do that. But they would need to finish up their math and language arts. Then they get free study. Free study could be just about anything. I have um, one child that I know will be outside with animals, working with, with her animals. I have um, kids could play if they wanted to. 
We have things like Duolingo or typing practice available on the computer. My son has also been learning coding, and so he could do some of that during this time. They can go for a hike. They can read books. There's so many different things they can do. I like to give my kids chunks of time so that they have the space to expand their interests. Then we'll just do evening cleanup dinner and then before bed all of my kids that can read get silent reading time in their beds and the little ones get read too. So this is just a general, you know, this gives me an outline for our day. And actually I have all of these kind of things, um, these printable things on my website on the delightfulhomeschool.com under free printables you'll see and you can just scroll down and there are Google Docs that you could take and print out if you wanted to if that worked for you guys. So during that family learning time is when we do the the rotating subjects, the loop subjects that I talked about. I talked about using a loop schedule instead of a, a schedule like on Tuesdays we do this and on Wednesdays we do this and on Thursdays because real life happens. Hey baby girl, careful. Careful. You want to come up and say hi to the people? Big 11 month old, say hello. She hey. learned how to wave bye bye. Can you show them bye bye? Oh yes, bye bye. Hey. She's got four teeth now. We are just popping out the teeth. <laughs> bye bye. So, um, life happens and maybe on Wednesday we have an unexpected friend show up to play. Um, maybe You get the point. You get the point. You don't need my examples. Life happens. And instead of being bound to a daily schedule by the days of the week where, you know, if that friend does show up on Wednesday and we just really feel like the Lord wants us to minister to that person that day or, you know, go somewhere with them or do something, then, you know, if history was on Wednesday, then what? Then either I mess up Thursday's schedule or history doesn't happen for another week or whenever it's scheduled next and it, it really kind of throws things off. So the benefit of a loop schedule is that you just have a list of the topics that you want to cover during that time and you just go to the next one on the list. And so let's say the next one on the list was history and you got interrupted that day and it didn't happen. Then the next day you just do history. You know, your, your list doesn't have to be dictated by the day of the week. You just do the next thing. It's wonderful. Nothing gets skipped and it, it provides a lot of flexibility, which is the thing that I like about year-round homeschooling. Is instead of taking a whole summer off, we can just take a Wednesday off if we feel the need. So what I do for myself is I write out a checklist. So these are the topics that I'm wanting to go through during our family learning time this year. Now you can see that some things are on here more than once and that's because I decided what is the frequency that I wanted to do these topics. And so nature journals is something that it, I don't necessarily want to do every week. It's just something that we enjoy for that day and we do it for a while, but it's not as much of a priority to me as say our history curriculum that we're working through. And so I, will, I put that on this list only one time. Whereas our history is on here two times. Um, also this read alouds, if you can see that, read alouds that I have slash art. Uh, we do read aloud times throughout the day, like just for fun. We're doing, right now we're reading Mr. Popper's Penguins. We're almost done with it. It's such a fun book. So this time is not necessarily that kind of just fun reading. This is things that I might want to pull out. Like maybe I want to read a passage from a book like this. Okay, that's a little bit more of a thinking book. Or maybe I want to read a biography of someone. This is the time that I intentionally have set aside that during our family learning time that day, we are reading from something like that. And while I'm reading, the kids can doodle or draw or color. We have these, um, I just happen to be sitting by all these resources. You can tell we use a lot. We have these coloring pads from Arteza and these really cool markers. I don't know where the markers Oh, they're right next to me. This is hilarious. There must be a, been a kid here. Color. <laughs> they're these really neat dual tip markers that color so nicely. So that's something that they often will want to um, work on while I read. Or, you know, clay, play doh, that kind of thing. So they're here listening with their hands busy. <clears throat> Map tracing, I talked about on another video. I don't won't reiterate that again. 
and science experiments and art lessons. So those, you know, I all covered more in depth in my last video on those extracurriculars. So I keep this in my binder that I keep my my logs, my logs of what we've done. It's all in this binder that I just kind of keep out so that I don't forget to write things down. And right in the front is a plastic pocket, which is really dirty, but <laughs> you get the idea. And so I can just stick that in there and this keeps me on task. Okay, so we have that and we have our block schedule. So these two are enough that I can totally go on the fly. I don't need to do anything else. I can just know what's going on. If I'm needing a day to be a little more structured or if I'm just wanting a day to be a little more structured, I have a planning pad. This is a new one that I just got from Arteza, but it's basically just times. And I can use this resource and my rotating subject of the day and just quickly jot down, you know, during this nine o'clock time, I wanna make sure kids are finishing up these, their morning checklist. During the 10 o'clock, I wanted to kind of be sitting down at the table. Oh, during the one o'clock, we have a chiropractor appointment. Okay, I can just kind of get more specific if I want to, but I don't have to. I am not tied to any kind of schedule. No matter what tools you use, whether it's whether you're like a scheduling person or a loose person, no matter what, you need to make them work for you. You should not be a slave to your schedule. It's there as a tool to make your life better, not make you more stressed out. So the second thing I'm going to talk to you real quick about, and then I'm going to take you out to meet our newest addition to the farm. We got another little cute addition. But um, I want to show you my log book. This is what I did last year. Now, I am not married to any type of logging. In fact, I really think I've changed it almost every year to a different system because by the end of a school year, I'm just kind of sick of it, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I may or may not... Um, I may be switching to something else. I've been looking at a product that somebody else has made. Actually, somebody who's going to be a guest, a special guest in my Delightful Homeschool Moms group. I've been looking at one of her products and thinking that I may end up switching to that. But this is what I did last year, and this I have available for free on my website in that free printable section if you would want to take it and print it out or make it your own or whatever you want to do. I took the kids' names off before I uploaded that so that you could, you know, not have to take my kids my kids names um, okay so in my book this is what it looks like inside whoops I'm gonna have to back up aren't I this is what it looks like inside this is one day of vlogging for kids because I have four kids that need to be logged in Missouri once you are seven at the beginning of a school year you have to start logging so even though I have eight children only four of them have to be Locked, and I'm so glad. Um, so he, we have to have 1,000 hours in a school year logged here, and 600 of those have to be in core subjects. That's our state requirements. And so I have this divided up between core subjects and non-core subjects, and then I just kind of jot down. I jot down in minutes because I'll do, you know, like 60 minutes, 45 minutes, 30 minutes. I'll typically just, you know, jot down about how long it took them. Okay, so this let me just explain this to you because in my website where I said you can print this out, I said go to this video and see how it's going to be explained because it's too hard to write it all out sometimes. So let me just show you. On this day, up at the top here, oops, I'm going to pick, okay, I have an idea. I'm going to take this page out because otherwise this binder is too heavy to hold up. This is a whole year worth of papers. Okay, so on this particular day, we did a bouncy egg experiment and then I, I jotted down here on some of these things about how long it took me just so I would remember because I did the second page later. Okay, we did our lesson from our Bible history that we were studying then. I read aloud from the Phantom Toll Booth, so that went here and the other. That was a core subjects that we did all as a family. I tried to simplify it because I have a lot of kids and they're doing different things. The top half of this is everybody did it together. Everybody did these non-core subjects. We did watercolors. We took a hike and we sang hymns together. So I put that under like music for, it was only like 15 minutes, I think, 15, yeah. Okay, so those are the things we did all together. Now, down on this bottom half, I have my four kids' names written here and this is their individual portion. 
So for my daughter Isabella, it says for math she did quiz 15. We do teaching textbooks, so I just write down whatever lesson they did that day. She did copy work. She read for her literature, she read from her book, Backyard Homestead. And then I wrote down shop class under her elective. So this day, my husband was installing a skylight in our barn. And so he took my oldest two out with him. They talked about how to do it. They watched a little video on how to do it because he'd never done it before either. They talked it through. Then they did it together. So it went on for most of the afternoon. I only counted one hour of it, even though it was several hours long, because I just felt like that was more appropriate for a shop class. You know, you you do. You do what you do. But if things go on for a long time, I kind of figure, like, for my particular kids, I know that they weren't 100% invested that whole time. So I just kept it to an hour. Personal preference here. Um, and I just put shop class, how to install a skylight in a metal roof. Down here for my um, third son, he had his math, his copy work. He had for his space down here, his elective that he did that day was hand knotted handles for walking sticks. He had learned how to do this and was really excited. And so that was like a craft and activity that I put down. He worked on it for 45 minutes. I just wrote that down there. And then, you know, same for my daughter. She did like a drawing thing. So then when we went over to this page, so these two are next to each other. You can see I hole punched them. So on this page here, I have all of those same subjects that were over here. So at the top half, this is Isabella's square right here. The top half are the core subjects and down here is the non-core subjects. Okay, so then I just transferred it over. She did science for 30 minutes, everybody did. She did her Bible history, she did math, I wrote down how long, she did English, literature, and then I totaled those up. This is the total non-core minutes, I mean core minutes that she did that day. Generally, can you leave it there, sweetie? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Generally, this adding up part, I'm not doing every day. Um, I will fall behind and then go through and just sit and add up all the totals, you know, to catch up. So that's, that's just real life, folks. Then down here I have, again, jotted next to the numbers of what she did. So it's not pretty, it's not, you know, it's not a fancy work of art, but it has worked. It has worked just fine. And so, like I said, I may continue that, I'm still thinking about it. I may switch to something else just for my own variety in life. But that is, that is that. So if I didn't cover something thoroughly enough, if you have another question, please ask me. And I do hope that some of you will join us in our mom's group before it closes because it's just so much fun to just be able to chat with these ladies on a more individual basis. Now, let me take you out and show you the newest edition. Where are we going? We have duckies. Oh boy. What do you think? Yeah, the they were they were climbing the up the ramp. They never used the ramp to get in yet, but they just <laughs> they were climbing. Here's my favorite chicken. Its name is Marker. That's what James named it. <laughs> Hi, Marker. <laughs> Hi, Marker. Okay, so these are the new friends that just came yesterday. Eight ducklings. Eight ducklings. It's a half chicken duck. Duck, because it was stuck up. It's going to be scary. They have a swimming pool, of course. How do they do in the pool? Oh, you do good. Look at you. Yeah, they're still getting used to it. Us. They're so cute. So Jason's aunt had these at her house. So. Someone they else came to us. Someone else <laughs> to give us ducks too. Yes. Someone else. Which I think would be cute to have different kinds of ducks, you know? You just want all the animals though, don't you? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. no. What do you not want? Get rain now! A ferret! Okay, I don't either, so there you go. The chicks are not scared of anyone. Mm -hmm. They run after us. Chicks have bigger wings. Yeah, they have tiny wings. Lydia, say chicks. Chicks. No one's scared of Lady Chum. He's just giggling. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Ooh, water. Get on, 
There's 20 wild animals. Make that 21. Lenny, you wild animal? I hope you're not dumb enough to jump stuff. Can you believe that's 20 right there? They're pretty cute. Hey, you sit down and she's playing. It's jump. Hey, she's so happy. Lydia, are you in paradise? Woo! Don't she's try to stop it. Here, Paul. I saw her. He was like. <laughs> 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 she goes for the chicks because the ducks are too fast. <laughs> she hasn't got anybody yet. <laughs> They're so cute.